Hey everybody, welcome back to Shaper Speak. So, show of hands, how many of you actually slow down your router speeds? So the uh, Shaper Origin has six speed settings and if I'm being honest, very rarely have I ever turned the speed down. So that's the point of this video. Let's see what happens when we use some common bits, principally the eighth inch down cut and quarter inch down cut, and we turn the speeds down, all the way down. The numbers you see on the screen are directly off of Shaper Origins website. So again, the Shaper has six speeds and these are the RPM for each of the various speeds. I'm going to be testing speeds one, three, and five. So to begin this test, I am using the eighth inch down cut bit. I am setting the depth of cut to an eighth of an inch. I have a series of three lines that are 24 inches in length and approximately the width of the bit itself. So here we go. I have turned the speed down all the way to setting number one and right off the bat, I can tell you it was, it was difficult to move the machine. Um, there wasn't a lot of uh, that normal kind of ease of operation. Like it felt like I had to force the machine to make the cut. And coincidentally, uh, when I made the plunge, the machine itself somewhat rocked upward. So I did not get all that great of a plunge cut. <clears throat> as far as speed three, I have the camera, or excuse me, I have the uh, footage here sped up four times. The rate of cut was a little bit easier at the higher speed. And as far as speed five, I think it goes without saying it was effortless. The machine plunged without any incident. I was able to easily maneuver the machine and presto, I've got my cuts. Now I will freely admit that the uh, plywood that I'm using does not have the greatest of veneers on it. So you're gonna see a lot of fuzzies and fraying. Uh, but this first line I am showing is that first speed, speed one, and it was jagged. And the cut quality gets incrementally better as the speed of the router was turned up. Eighth of an inch at speed three, and then the final speed at speed five, and it's pretty crisp. Um, the only kind of boogered up edges that you're seeing there, um, that's kind of just from the veneer. But yeah, at the lowest speed, even with the smallest bit, it was a struggle to move the machine. All right, next up is the quarter inch down cut bit. Again, this is the stock quarter inch bit that comes with your Shaper Origin. Now I am going to be using essentially the same type of settings based upon this bit. I'm only going to be plunging quarter of an inch deep um, and I am starting at that lowest speed setting of one. Much like the eighth inch bit, on its lowest, uh, lowest speed setting, it was an absolute struggle to move the machine to make that cut. And then in the second iteration, when I turn the speed up, it becomes incrementally easier. Now, there is going to be something that you'll notice right there. Uh, now I've covered it up, but you'll see it again in just a little bit. Um, I vacuumed out the recesses in the eighth inch test and I should have left them because here's the result. When you slow down the router speed, the bit doesn't actually have enough RPM to evacuate the chips. So there is the cut on the highest speed setting on speed five and there's little to nothing in the channel itself. It all got evacuated out. Whereas the two lower speeds, you have quite a bit of chip buildup. And that can become problematic, especially if your feed rate is not all that quick. Um, you could end up 
burning bits, um, and we all know that heat is the death of router bits. So again, highly recommend just cranking the speed up to at least setting five, if not just leaving it on setting six. Now the final bit that I'm going to be comparing is a bit that I don't use very often, but I thought would be, I don't know, interesting to see how it would react to this test. And this is a half inch straight cutter bottom cleaning bit. I use this bit when I have large pockets that I need to cut out. Um, I've never really used it for this kind of test where I'm attempting to follow a straight line or anything, so this should be interesting. I am again setting the depth of cut to a quarter of an inch just to make it fair, and I was also a little bit worried that it wouldn't be able to cut a full half inch um, on this lowest speed setting, but nonetheless, here comes the test. I'm on setting one with a half inch diameter bottom cleaning bit, and yes, the footage is sped up four times, and yes, this was very difficult to get the machine across, but not nearly as difficult as the spiral bits. And I found that interesting, that the feel of the cut, even though the router was not spinning nearly as fast as it should, it didn't feel like the machine was struggling. And I'm, I'm now curious because I'm thinking there might be another test in the future of comparing straight bits to spiral bits and the quality of cut. So I'm getting a little off topic here. Um, you can see, getting back to this test, as I am making the cuts, obviously I am generating a lot of dust and chips, and my extraction is having a hard time keeping up, but in just a moment, you're going to see the results, and this was interesting to me. Um, with the exception of dust collection being non-existent, um, once I suck out all of the chips, the quality of cut at the three speeds is almost indiscernible. Like if I did not write this speed one, three, and five next to each of the channels, I don't think you would be able to tell which one was which. Very interesting. Um, I don't keep a lot of straight bits on hand, but after doing this test, I think I just might. So what can you conclude from this test? Well, if you're like me and you just keep your router speed at either that setting five or setting six, you're probably good with 99% of the bits that you're going to be chucking up into your shaper. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. I feel like that's a little kind of underwhelming, but, you know, the results are the results. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.